Glory be to God. Hallelujah, everyone. I hope everybody is well today. I just want to get on here today to just, you know, out of obedience as to what God has dropped into my spirit. I just wanted to get on here to share to you the revelation that he has given to me. So a couple of days ago, um, as I was just in my praise and worship and just, you know, being in the presence of the Lord, um, in my moment of being still, I heard him say expediently, expediently. So when I went up, went and looked up the word expediently, it says suitable or efficient or accomplishing a purpose. And then there's some other definite definition meanings. Um, it says convenient but based on a concern or self-interest rather than principle it says obsolete speedily expeditious something that is a means to an end especially based on self-interest something contrived or used to meet an urgent need and as i was you know just meditating on that the Lord brought to me a revelation, like, you know, what we've been going through and the things that people have been praying out to the Lord for, for, you know, seeking his face for those issues that they're going through. Like, say, for instance, like you're seeking God for deliverance or, you know, God has give, has called you to go somewhere. And you're like, Lord, I don't have the means. I don't, you know, know what I'm going to do. So it's like he's saying it's going to happen just like that. You know, say, for instance, you go to get a passport and, you know, it's a long process. But I'm hearing that it's going to happen expediently. You know, it's going to happen expeditiously. It's going to happen fast. Amen. And, you know, uh, and I was just sitting there like, you know, I've been praying for the Lord for, you know, even my own self-deliverance, you know, asking God to, you know, help me. And what is so amazing is when this word came and, you know, I just, you know, when God gives you a word, you just hold on to it, you know, because the enemy will try to come in like a thief in the night and try to steal you know, the word of God from you. So you have to hold on to it and, and meditate on that word and believe that God, you know, whatever he gives you, whatever he drops in your spirit, whatever he tells you, you just got to believe like God, yes. You know, whatever you're saying, I receive it. You know, our, you know, our answer should be yes and amen. Lord, let thy will be done. And just out of obedience and just, just, knowing that God is going to do it and trusting him that I got the deliverance that I needed, you know, and I just want to thank God for his, you know, just answering me speedily, you know, you know, we, God teaches us patience, but God will also, you know, in his time, he will do things. Sometimes he'll do things like he'll make you wait or he'll do them immediately, you know? And this is just one of those immediate things. And I just, I just thank God for it. So I'm just, you know, speaking over your life and decreeing and declaring that it will be whatever you're seeking God for, that it will happen expediently, that it will happen immediately. You know, it, he's saying it's whatever your self-interest is, he's going to answer those things. Amen. And I believe it and I receive it. So I want you to believe and receive that whatever it is, God is going to do it for you. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the scriptures because last night, you know, as you know, he gave me that revelation that day. Um, last, So this was the past three days. I'm going to say this has been um, he has placed this on my heart. So. The day after that, he also dropped in my my spirit last night as I was going to bed, the word um, expedient, expediently again. I said, okay, Lord, you keep dropping this word on me. So I, it, it, I'm pressing it. It must be more that you're trying to get me to understand revelations. You're trying to get me to understand. So 
you know, I got to make sure as I go to sleep on it and I meditate on it at night, I will, it will be on my mind in the morning. Amen. And so as I got up, okay, I was like, Lord, you know, after I did my prayer, I was like, Lord, okay, back to this expedient, expediently. So something dropped in my spirit. My God, God knows how to speak to us in the way that we'll understand. Amen. So God dropped in my spirit. Look up the word expedient in your um, Strong's compository, Vine's compository. So this is my, when some, you know, when God drops a word, sorry about the glare, this is what I run to, right? And that day I didn't, but, you know, he urged me today to go look up the word. So I look up the word expedient. And it says to bring together, right? And I'm saying, okay, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm listening, speak to me. So I'm just going to give it to you as how I, you know, follow what God was saying. And I want to go ahead and give you the scriptures behind it as well. And let me get it open. Sorry about that. But yeah, I'm going to give you the uh, scriptures to back up what God has been placing on my heart for the past few days. And see, you know, the biblical usage of the word is to to bear, to bring together, to bear together, or at the same time, to carry with others, to collect or contribute in others to help, to be, to help, to be profitable, be expedient, be expedient. So that is to accomplish whatever God has purposed you to do. So what is that that God has, you know, a, has placed on your heart for you to accomplish? What is the purpose that God has given to you? Whatever that is, that should be something that we press into to seek God instruction on as to what it is he needs us to do and wants us to do. Amen. So we are to be efficient and, and suitable for what God needs us to do. Amen. So I'm hearing that it's going to happen expediently. Amen. It's going to be, it's going to be expeditiously. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get into the scriptures in the first chapter. Is um, I'm going to read from the, you know, today I'm going to read from the King James Version instead of the ESV today. And it says here in Matthew chapter 5, 29, And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it out from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of my members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Matthew 5, 30 says, And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And it's like the other day when I read this scripture, he put he yesterday he placed some, he gave me the scripture yesterday, he placed in my heart. And he said, you know, what is that? He gave me a revelation of it. It's like, what is that sin that's in your life? What is that sin that is in your life? That is causing you. It's like ask yourself, what is it? What is that sin that is causing you to be, to that's hindering you? You know, you want to cut it off at the root. You want to you want to cut that off at the root, and then once you're delivered from it, once you repent of it and come out of that sin, you want to sin no more. You know, so we need to search our hearts and find out what is that sin that we're dealing with that we need to cut off you know it's like he's saying it's better to cut it off than that our whole bodies will be thrown into hell so look into you so when he's saying spiritually like if you're sinning with your eye you know like say here um like your right hand cut it off like what is that sin that is causing you to 
you know, that's causing a mouse, you know, that not a mouse, but what's causing you to deter from the purpose that God has for you, because it's all about his purpose and his will for your life. So it's like an infection, like what is that infection and how can we cut that infection off from the root? We want to cut it off. We want to turn away from that sin and, and do it no more. Because the more that you, you continue to sin, it, it's going to become like gangrene and it's going to spread throughout your whole body. So he's saying cut it off because if you don't quit it, you're going to end up, you're going to end up your whole body, your, your whole body is going to end up in hell, you know? So cut it off, whatever, you know, if you sin, sin with your eye, cut that, that lust of your eye out, that adultery of your eye. If it's an adultery sin and it's a lust sin, cut it out. He's speaking to you spiritually, cut it out, cut those spiritual things out that is affecting you, that is hindering you. Amen. So here in um, Matthew 18, 6 says, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. God don't play about his children. If you were a child of God, we are all children of God. But his little ones, he definitely don't play about. Mm -mm -mm. He said it'd be better if you just hung yourself, placed a milestone around your neck, and drowned in the depths of the sea. To me, that's that's excruciating. But you know, he said it, it can it be something way worse than that. You know, you know, turn. Whew, that's heavy. Let me keep going. Matthew's nineteen ten. His disciples say unto him. If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So what is that adultery? You know, is, is it adultery? You know, um, are you, did you marry to continue to commit adultery? You know, he's saying it's better for you if not even have married, you know. God doesn't take his covenant and his his marriage, marriages, if you think about it in the in the perspective of Adam and Eve, you know, he said, you know, he took, he took woman from man's rib. And when they came together, they became one. So you going outside of that covenant is against what God's laws are and what he is saying as what a covenant marriage should be and that's why he says thou shall not commit adultery so it's back to what is you what is your right hand doing what sin are you committing you know um that you you know what is that infection that you need to cut off you know that could be what's hindering you that can be you know what's causing delay or i mean whatever the case may be but you have to look into yourself and search that within yourself. Amen. So John eleven fifty, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation, not nation, perish not. So Jesus died for us. That what, Jesus was the man who died. For he died for all the nations. He died for, for everyone. So that we would not perish. That we will have a, a chance to live in eternity with him. In everlasting life. And it's like, but yet we still pierce him. By the sins that we commit. We're still piercing him. And, and, he has, and he paid the ultimate price for us. So what he's saying is come up from under those sins that you have committed, that you're committing, turn away from them and come back to him and sin no more. Whew. Holy Spirit, let it flow. This is none of me at all. 
because I got on here not knowing what I was going to say. I was just going to give it to you how God is giving it to me. But this, every everything through the scriptures is none of me. John 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus has sent his comforter expediently. See, get, get you, give your life back to the Lord. Give your life back to the Lord. Once you turn away from your evil ways, give, dedicate your life back to Jesus. Let me tell you something. He should be the only option, the one and only option. You know, um, he's, Jesus is the only way. You understand me? And we shouldn't ha have any other options but him. He should be the number one option. Because in order to make it through these tests and these trials, we need the comforter. And the comforter is his Holy Spirit. How can you, if you're not under the covering of Christ, the you know, then the enemy is able to come in to afflict you, to cause you turmoil, to cause you mental illness. He's, he's able, because you're not under the comforter. You're not ever under the covering of God. Amen. So he's telling you, if, come back to me, dedicate your life back to me, and I will send my comforter to you. Amen. <sighs> So John 18, 14 says, now, Cypheus, sorry, Cypheus was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. See, Christ was on a purpose. Amen. And that's brings us, this word expedient is so powerful because it was, he accomplished the purpose. He accomplished the plan. He did what he had to do expediently for you so that you would have eternal life and live in heavenly places with the heaven and sit on the right side of Jesus Christ. You, will, you will inherit the kingdom through Jesus Christ. See, he did it expediently because he knew that it, it, the perilous times were coming. He knew that the times were coming to where that we would need the comforter because he 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 knows because he knows that the earth will earth in heaven will pass away. See, with people just around here lollygagging and thinking it's time and just thinking everything's peace and you know just peaches and cream, but Christ is to return. Are you ready? Are you ready for him? Is the question. Are you ready for him to come? I'm sorry about that. I'm, just, my, I'm trying to make sure my battery don't let die on the laptop. But, you know, I hope you're understanding what the Lord is speaking in this time. So Acts 19.19. 19. Many of them also, which use curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver this here shows that Jesus is real they're going to realize that that you know whatever sins they're committing, sorcery sin, whatever sins they're committing, it's all sin, whatever witchcraft or whatever they're doing, they're going to realize it was, it has no purpose. Because who, who is the purpose? Jesus Christ is the purpose. So that's why God said it's going to happen expediently. They're going to end up throwing out those books because there's no power greater than the father. You understand me? See, they, they speak about the universe, but God is the creator of the universe. He's all knowing. He's all omnipotent. He's all powerful. Amen. They're going to end up realizing they probably spent millions and trillions of dollars on sorcery and witchcraft to all see that it, it it's, it's of no effect to the Father. You understand me? It has no power. 
because all the power belongs to the Lord. See, I love this scripture where he said he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So we get power from the, through the Father. We don't get power from worldly things. We don't get power from whatever magic they doing. That is that is not the power of the Father. That's just like the Egyptians um, in the time of Pharaoh when they were performing, um, trying to do everything that Mo Moses did to perform um, miracles and wonders. And in the end of it, they seen that just like with Pharaoh, they seen that their power was of no effect. They still had to let Israel go. He had to let the people go because they, they realized God is a greater power. And see what they about to realize is God is a greater power. And they're going to be throwing out them books. Amen. So Acts 2020. And how I kept back nothing was po was profitable unto you, but but have sold you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. He did. Jesus went from house to house. He spoke to. He sat with people. He he ate with people. Even in in his times, it was it was unholy. It was um considered abominable to sit with with gentiles you know and back in that time it was seen you know looked at dishonor you you're eating with sinners you know you get what i'm saying he he said you know he made it he made it, he he helped you to understand that his word can be spread throughout it should not be just boxed in god shouldn't be boxed in anyway because first of all God is bigger than the universe. You know, I'm not I'm not putting him in no box because you know what he said, what is impossible to man is not impossible to him. So that right there told me he's outside the box. He's not inside the box. So we gotta get outside that matrix of thinking that the things of how the how men runs the world is how God runs the world, and that's absolutely not the case. All right, so let's keep going. So 1 Corinthians 6, 12, it says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. He will not be brought under the power of any, any body. He does far above and exceedingly than what man can do. So I'm not giving man power over me. God can, God, listen, I, I'm, listen, and I'm speaking for myself. I don't know if I'm speaking for somebody, but for me, God is my source, you know. Um, I, I look at myself as being his footstool, you know. He, because he's all powerful, and I know that for sure. You know, I fear God. I wouldn't even want to try to think I'm, near a, a speck on his shoe is what they say. <laughs> I'm not a speck, a speck on his shoe. Amen. Okay. Now, 1 Corinthians uh, 7, verse 35, it says, And this I speak for you, for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Amen. First Corinthians 10, 23, it says, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So certain things don't aren't edifying to God. What, you know, especially, you know, if you look at it, um, it's come to me like in a religious sense of how, you know, a lot of religious people think um, what they're doing is edifying God. Um, and they think that they're doing everything right. But God says nobody's perfect. OK, um, God can use anybody. So what you may seem unclean, God may say, well, wait a minute. 
I delivered that person from that. So who are you to judge? What I say is clean. What I consider clean, you consider unclean. You know, you never, you don't know how God is working on that person's heart. You know, God searches the heart of man. It is man who looks out on the exterior. Amen. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 10, 33 says, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. 2 Corinthians 8, 10, it says, and herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Let me read that again. It says, and herein I give my advice for this expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Mm. The second Corinthians 12, one, it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, but I will come to vision in revelation of the Lord. It's all about God's purpose and his vision, you know, and his glory at the end of it. It's not us. God uses us. We are his vessels. We are to be plugged into him, you know, for him to be always ever flowing through us. His glory, it should he should have all the praise in the end. Amen. It's all for his purpose. This is what all this is about. It's all the purpose of God, not the purpose of man, not the lust of man, not the sins of man. That's why we need to come out of that, come out from up out of that and come to him to get into his purpose and his will so that he can use us how he wants to use us in an expedient way, you know, amen. Hebrews 12, 10 says, for they verily for a few days chasten us with their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness, amen. So this is the word today that God has placed on my heart. And I gave you the, the story in the beginning of how God, um, you know, how he led me up into this point and how now in everything that he has spoken to me in the past was all combined into this word. So I believe this word is for a point in time. And this is the time that God has appointed and God is good. And we're forever grateful for his, for his loving and kindness. And we should be loving and kind to one another. You know, sometimes it's hard and God sees that, you know, certain, you know, situations and certain things that we could work on better. But God doesn't condemn us for it. He speaks to us as, as if he's our, Jesus is our priest. So we speak to him as in a way, you know, you know, Lord, yes, I did do it. I have no excuses. We need to stop having excuses for behind what we're doing. I heard this word the other day, and this might be off topic, but this is all coming together. I heard this word um, the other day where a young woman said that she, you know, through, she had an abortion. And you know how people have abortions, and some people may have had abortion from rape or abusive relationships. They didn't want to be with that person anymore. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, those things are building a co coming into covenant with something that is ungodly. And that's why we have to search the sins of ourselves to see what it is from the root of what we have came into agreement with covenantly. That is not the covenant of God's will. We should only, we should only have a covenant with the father and not, um, let's see, for instance, what they say, Moloch is the, um, who is he? Yeah, Moloch is the uh, sacrificial of uh, abortions and killing babies and stuff like that. That's for that God, you know, that idol. You know, I did a word about um, idols the other day. I will actually attach that into this link because all this stuff here is just pouring out of me right now. <laughs> 
Um, I have no control over, but I'm just grateful that God is just even using me um, to even speak here, not in my own confidence, but the confidence through the Lord, because God knows, like, I, I used to get nervous, but it's just by God's just coming and just reassuring me, hey, listen, I got you. I'll tell you what to say, <laughs> you know? So God is good, but I just also want to, uh, you know, just let you know, like, we have to stop making it excuses for the sins that we do and why we did it, because we just need to, like I said, Jesus is our priest. Hey, Lord, you know, back then I did this, and this happened to me, so this is why I did that, and there's no excuses as to what I did, but Father God, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I repent of my sin. I ask that you forgive me and, you know, help me to turn away from my evil ways and sin no more. Just confess your sins to your to Jesus Christ and forgive, because sometimes it just, sometimes it's us not forgiving from what happened to us. It it, it kind of built a stronghold because we keep thinking about it and what i've learned is repetition i love i love this word repetition because it helps you to repeatedly every time it may cross your mind every time it may touch your heart of something that happened to you traumatically you know like lord can you please find it in my heart to truly forgive this person because you're not doing it for them you're doing it to set yourself free if you say lord i really want to be free of just having hatred and anger to whatever whatever may cause me to continue to feel condemned in my spirit and in my heart lord help me to find the true forgiveness of it and to turn away and to step in your true and to be not even to step in but just to to turn away and be able to say you know at the end of the day if i see this person I can you say, you know what, I already forgive you for what you have done to me. You know, it just sometimes you forgiving yourself, forgiving them is for yourself. And sometimes we have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive others, but we always have to forgive ourselves because you know what, we, we held on it for so long that we forgot to forgive ourselves for making this basically run our lives. It, it, it affected our lives so it basically ran your life because it, you weren't able to forgive yourself from what happened even though it may not have been your fault but you holding on to it was your fault so we have to take fault into what we hold on to um, as unforgiveness because it's our fault for not letting it go so that's why when, it, when God a tra something may happen and it may cause that traumatic experience to pop back up. And now you're into like a, you're having an emotional breakdown. So to dis discard all that, forgive yourself for not forgiving and holding on to that fault that someone else has caused because it's our fault for not forgiving. So I pray that this word has helped you. And um, I'm going to close out in a prayer. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this word. I thank you, Father God, for even letting me speak this word to your people, Father God, to sit here, Father God, amongst you, not knowing what I was going to get on here to say, but just trusting you and trusting your way and your will, Lord. I hope this word has set people free, that it has set them free today, that it will bring them comfort, Father God, that it will allow them to see, Father God, the things of their hearts, Father God, that they need to that they need to come up against the root of it and come out of it and, and find forgiveness and let it go free, free yourself, release it, break free of it, loose, let it loose you today in the name of Jesus. Let this word loose you and bring you free and set you forth forward on the path that the Lord has called you to do for his purpose. And his purpose is the only way and the only will that we should be following in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Amen. So, um, you know, if, if this word has encouraged you, please pass this word along, you know, pass it forward, send it to someone that, you know, it may could help um, share, it, you know, like comment, put a comment, um, 
that in God that God may have placed on you to be an encouragement to others, you know, because we all are encouraged through God. So let God's encouraging words come through your mouth in the comments. Amen. So you have a blessed day until next time. Have a safe and blessed week. Amen.